Good everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so in the last episode, I talked about the automation of the case management system, which is pretty fantastic, right? I mean, I taught you how to um, configure uh, the queues and then how to route your case to the queue and how to escalate the case and then how to automatically to send an email out, right? Pretty simple, pretty nice, right? So that's all great. Let's say, you know, you run a company, okay? And usually the customer calls you and, you know, one of the uh, support guy will create a case um, and then the case get routed. That's great, that's fine. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you might also say to customer, hey, we got a support email. If you have any question, why don't you email, uh, you know, your queries to our support or issues to support email and one of the support guy will you know, get back to you so normally what happens behind the scene the support guy uh, usually monitor say this is my say uh, case uh, support email and one of the support guy will monitor this uh, email address and and based on that you know he or she will go and create a case manually which is okay if you're getting say 10 cases a day or it's also okay if you're getting 50 cases a day, but if you're getting 500 cases a day for whatever reason, right, it gets overwhelming. And and if you're a support guy, if you're worked on support, and you know what I mean, right, it's overwhelming amount of case and clients getting frustrated why my case is not getting handled. Well, the reason why it's not getting handled, it's taking a support guy to read through each case and create a case to even make sure whether it needs to go to the case or not, first of all, right? Uh, imagine if you're a big multi, you know, billion dollar firm and, and for whatever reason, right, you know, sometimes companies, you know, do silly things, right? They, they things that, um, Hey, we don't need support guy. Why? Because somebody at the top of the chain, you know, would have read something somewhere or seen somewhere. Oh, why do we need a support person? Yeah, we can use artificial intelligence, the fancy, cool looking term. Most of the people don't even understand how the thing works. And then they come up with the jargon and say, oh, let's replace support stuff with AI as if, you know, Cyborg is just down in the down the warehouse, you know, getting ready to replace. It doesn't work that way. So so uh, the reason why I give an analogy, right? I mean, you would have seen that scenario. Big companies, they don't invest in the research. They say, oh, okay, one guy, let him do it. Why do we bother, right? Or why do we need a support guy? He's doing a pretty good job, right? If it's 500 case, he will manage it. You know, you know what I mean. So it happens. It happens in most of the companies, that even the big, big brands, it happens, right? So um, it's not really a great solution, okay, in that case. And the company might say, okay, we can hire another customer support guy, which is great. But how about if you can automate the process? You don't even have to, and the support guy can do something else, right? And can look at the case and can actually uh, help with the case resolution instead of creating just the case, right? So to do that, Salesforce has a pretty amazing option to automate it. So what I meant by that is that customer emails uh, you uh, about, or I mean to the customer, uh, to your support address and email. When the email touches your inbox, it will automatically hit the Salesforce and create a case behind the scene. And when it creates the case, it will go to the right um, queue. Sounds simple, right? So what I'm gonna do, I will use the Gmail uh, to do that. It's pretty uh, simple, so you can use other mail thing, but Gmail is pretty popular, so I can demonstrate using Gmail, pretty simple. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll go to the, first of all, you need to log into your Salesforce, okay? And let's go to the, uh, the service setup. So you go to the Scarecog icon, um, just go to the service setup. I'll just do that again. Um, and what you have to do, just look for the connect your support email. If for whatever reason, if you couldn't find it, just go to view all, okay, and just look for e email, right? So there you go. So click on here and click on next. So, you know, I'm using Gmail. So what I'll do, I'll just say, uh, uh, this is just a bloody dummy email. Um, I think. Um, so don't worry about it. So, um, so I'll do, I've done that. And I select the Gmail, I've added the email address, I go next. So that support, e support email address is where your customer will email you with the questions or queries, okay? Now, this is the magic part. What, what exactly should happen when, the e when you get an email? 
I uh, should go to email queue. So if you have different queues, so I got two queues. I want the email to go to the email queue. Obviously, the case origin is email. Um, the sender display name, which is great. You can change it if you want. That's But I just keep it as default case priority. Um, if you think all of your cases will be high, which is most likely not the case, so it can keep it as medium t task status. It depends upon your business process. You might uh, have different statuses, but for now, uh, just keep to the not started, right? Okay, click on next. Now, this is where the magic happened. This is very beautiful part um, because the reason why I can't use the word beautiful because this part, I really enjoy doing it. And it's the most simplest thing to do, okay? And it, it confuses people saying, oh, I have to configure, you know, um, uh, pop, IMAP settings, or oh, it will be difficult. No, absolutely not. I'll just show you how simple it is. Okay, so copy this, okay? Go to your Gmail, right? Uh, settings, depending upon the time of the year watching this, Gmail might change it. So I will say go to settings, okay? So which your option is for now, this is how it, go to settings. And there's something called forward and pop IMAP. Yeah, go here. And forget about this disabling and other stuff. Pay attention to add a forwarding address. This will be there, okay, irrespective of which version you're using, unless, uh, you know, Google decides to do something with it in the future. So that's something I can't control. It's up to the Google. But for the sake of argument, let's say it will not change. So click on add, okay, um, and just copy this, right? and paste it here and click on next, next, and you'll get something like this. Pretty simple, okay? And just come back and just say, I'm done setting up, next. So all you have to do, click on this. When you click on this, there's a pop-up comes up and the pop-up comes up and just click on okay. And after I'm done and click on next, and then it'll ask you to refresh this page, just refresh it, then you'll just, uh, we'll get something like this, okay? Pretty simple. Now that's done. That's pretty much you have to do. Nothing else. Okay. Now let's create a. Uh, let's test it. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just email to myself. You know, I'm silly, but you know, just wanted to demonstrate it, right? Okay. So I will say, silly beer case. Okay. Silly beer case. Can you oh, please ask? Sherlock to have a look, right? Whatever it is. Or Doctor Strange, yeah? I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of Marvel, right? I mean, I can talk about Marvel all day. Just, I'm a big fan. So, um, so I want this to be created as a case. So I'll just do send, okay? And now imagine what happens behind the scene. Picture this. Close your eyes and picture it. Email hit your inbox. Salesforce to Gmail interaction got initiated, right? And it will create a case behind the scene, right? The case is created. Now, once the case got created, it looks at the um, assignment rules to see, okay, so this is getting created um, with the case origin as email. And the queue it should go to the email queue. Nice and easy, okay? I mean, it's usually what happens is that it looks at the queue where it wants to go and looks and it sets up all of the configuration, right? In simple terms, right? Um, now, once it looks at the, you know, configuration and it just pushes the cases there. Nice and easy, right? Okay. Now, what I do, I will actually go to service. Okay, I'm just going to do what I do. I'll just refresh it. And uh, all right, I will go here. We are looking for that Dr. Strange, right? So let's see if, if we can do something with the Dr. Strange. Oh, yeah, that's a silly beer case. So someone is looking for Dr. Strange. There you are. So we have to look for Marvel care, my Dr. Strange now, So which is a different story. So this is how simple it is to configure you know the email support you know it's that simple right so now look at the power of salesforce take a minute to appreciate how good salesforce is right take a minute to appreciate how much money it has saved you if you're a business owner right so this is the magic of salesforce this is the magic of service cloud now we want to use it right so 
So yeah, sorry to be too <laughs> too dramatic, but I can't resist this one because it's just an amazing feature. I really love this feature, right? And it's the most easiest and simplest feature to configure. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to uh, talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and I hope you guys have an amazing evening or morning wherever you are. Adios.